meeting is being recorded. It sure is. And we'll get started. Let me also copy the agenda and pop it in the chat. Oh, it's already done. Thank you, Aurel. Uh, in which case, we'll get started. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Qbert Community Meeting. It is the 24th of July, 2024. And thank you very much for being here. Um, let's start the meetings by taking a minute to welcome Welcome anyone who's new to the meeting or not necessarily new to the meeting, but hasn't introduced themselves before. So if that is you, um, I'm going to mute and, and you're welcome to just jump in and say good. Everyone, um, my name is uh, Adi. I'm uh, new to the project. I uh, decided to hop in and contribute as my own team uh, and my job uses it often. Uh, happy to be here. Awesome. You're very welcome. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm uh, David. I'm also uh, new to this uh, meeting. I'm working together with uh, Cheryl on, we are part of the effort of uh, porting CDI to um, S390X architecture. How wonderful. Anyone else? I will take that as no. Well, welcome to you both. Um, so if there's anything you'd like to put on the agenda, feel free to add it to the agenda or the open floor. Um, the only requirement is that you are a member of the Qvert minus dev Google group. And I believe there is a link at the very top of this document um, if you are not. And then once you've, once you've done that, you can um, edit this document. Um, similarly, uh, since this is your first time here, if you've ever got a pull request that you need attention to, um, we cover this meeting. Similarly, um, uh, if you've raised a bug and it hasn't had any attention, uh, we put that here as, as well. Uh, so we will get into our agenda. Let's have a quick look at the 1.4 schedule. It hasn't changed. Um, where are the interesting bits? October 22 uh, is our 1.4 feature freeze. So that is the date to get everything done by, basically, with a release scheduled for the 12th of November, um, which is incidentally, uh, but not coincidentally, the first day of KubeCon, North America. I have a quick look at the CFP. So I'm not aware of any open CFPs at present. Um, if that is mistaken, please let me know. We do have two uh, QBIT talks that are on the horizon, one in August, one in September, uh, QCon China, got a maintainer talk, and uh, Container Days, Fabian's going to be speaking there. We'll have a really quick look at the KCDs and the DevOps Days, which do have CFPs, uh, numerous. So I've got uh, Ghana, uh, Chattogram, Porto, Australia, and in Dubai, Cloud Native Day. So that is for KCDs, Kubernetes Communities Days, regional events. And then DevOps Days is um, Belo Horizonte, Boston, Cairo, Chattanooga, Joao Pessoa, Curitiba, and Bogota. And they are, well starting to close uh, fairly rapidly. A whole bunch of them close in the next week, next week or two. Uh, so if you live anywhere near those places or will be in there when the event is going to be considered, um, yeah, putting in a Qbert talk. And if you do, please let me know. Okay. Apparently my sound is choppy. I don't think I have any processes running. Um, let's see if I can pass off what we're doing to the next person while I try and see if there's any containers running. Um, Daniel, are you here? 
Yes, I am. Wonderful. Uh, we'll just jump to your six CI meeting. Yeah. So, just in a nutshell, um, we recently opened up the six CI meetings uh, to the public. Um, so, in the in the process of uh, creating the six CI. Um, so, therefore, it was um, asked whether those um, um, schedules are fixed um, and. For that reason, we have actually opened a survey so that everyone who is interested in joining the meetings, one of these at least, um, can uh, respond um, and tell us um, how we would need to change the schedule. Um, no promises made, but we will try to cover the majority of people. Please take, take into account that both of us, who are most of the time like uh, um, Leading the meetings are actually based in uh, European time zones, so um, it might not be possible that we like um, would probably do this in midnight or something. But yeah, so we will do our best to cover the majority of uh, of people. Uh, so please respond if you this completely if you if you just can't make it to the to the schedule for now. Um, I've attached a link to the Cuba Dev mail if you didn't get it because you probably don't have like the um, have like the um, uh, have just uh, overlooked it in your inbox or something then um, I've attached a link to the Google groups um, link of the mail to into uh, the document. Okay, I talked too long already. That's that's it for me. Thanks. Any questions? I'm good. OK, then. So um, thanks. Um, so I figure since uh, Andrew is fiddling with his audio, probably we are going to go to the open floor. And I see uh, Quaps uh, having the first point there. Maybe we can just. Uh, I think yeah. this is the same question to Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I will be. Um, could be summit recordings available soon or any their estimation time for this? I have no idea. I figure that Andrew need to need to answer that. So um... I um I I haven't been able to fix my audio, so I will endeavor to speak slowly. And in that case, hopefully the choppiness is a bit more palatable. Um, and it's slow. Uh, we do not have any Qvert Summit recordings at present, unfortunately. Um, the CNCF are handling it. Uh, in the previous years, we've handled it. Um, and there was an issue with uh, several of the recordings, and we've asked to have them uh, repeated if possible. I was hoping to wake up to an email this morning so that saying that they were ready, but I have not. Um, that's as much of an ETA as I can give you for now, unfortunately. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, when they are ready, unless I'm already out, um, there'll be, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send out a, emails and, and throw it on the Slack as well. Um, just to go back a little bit, uh, there will be an upcoming change. Uh, this is a bit of a segue from me being away for a long period of time um, into how we handle the recordings for our meetings. Um, this includes all of the meetings that are recorded in the in Kubevert, so our SIG meetings, API meeting, and this one. Um, so what's going to happen is the people hosting those meetings will make the uh, recording available in a Google Drive link, which will then be added to the meeting agenda. Um, and then when I come back at the end of September or October, uh, I will be um, uploading them uh, to YouTube. And hopefully that isn't a massive inconvenience to everyone. Um, okay, whoever put the S390X point on the open floor, if you'd like to speak to it. Jan, do you want to do this or do you want me to say something? I think you are closer to the actual source code. Okay. Um, David and I have uh, each have a PR um, put together. His is for the uh, test cases. 
and the configuration of a cloud-based um, uh, CI/CD instance um, with um, with access, public access, not public public access, but um, to the CI/CD system configured in the same way that VOMC uh, configured the CI/CD cloud instance um, on S390X for KubeVirt. Um, and I have the CDI S390X enablement PR. Um, combined, these are quite large, um, but we are finding ourselves, or we feel that we are in a bit of a chicken and egg situation in that um, we're um, a, we feel we can't submit the S390X enablement without the CICD already being operational, but we can't get the CICD operational without a CDI S390X enablement merged. So um, what we are planning to, one, one approach that we've considered is combining these uh, PRs, these planned PRs into one so that it would all happen at once, but that makes them quite, makes the one PR quite large. Um, another approach would be to um, submit them both at the same time and add links of each to the other so that is, it is clear that they sort of have to be um, enabled together. And um, there's another uh, aspect to this and that uh, Brian needs to enable the pull secrets for um, actually executing things on our CICD cluster. So um, my question is like, should we have like just a, a separate, like, you know, uh, David, someone from this uh, Qbert community and I, maybe Brian, getting together and sort of pushing it all at once so that we can uh, do troubleshooting back and forth between the PRs or just submit both PRs and then, you know, handle the mess in the morning or, you know, what what is the uh, preferred approach for these that... Um, that's we were so we're looking for a little bit of feedback so that we don't you know make a dog's breakfast of it. So yeah, uh, for me, I, I'd look at uh, to Mike and Alexandra, I suppose, to see what they prefer to do here. Um, I can support in any way. I can I can trigger jobs manually if they want that against a certain PRs or whatever. But I can help out in that way. Um, but for the CDI stuff specifically. I'd probably look to Alexander and Mike. Yeah, I would say yeah. just... Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Can Michael. Go? Yeah, Alexander, you're the build expert. Uh, I would say just leave it to uh, as two PRs and, and just push them together, and then we can figure out uh, how to best merge it you know if it's together or if the, the system is broken for a little bit while the other one merges that's that's fine i think okay well it's it's kind of orthogonal to everything else so it would only be the s390x system that's broken and if you break something that at this point doesn't even exist it's probably not a big tragedy so um right yeah. That's, that's why I think it's it's better to just do two PRs and, and make them a little small and make it easier to review. Great, great. Thank you very much for that for that feedback. And we will proceed with that. Um I have another um odd question. Uh we're planning on doing it soon, like this week. Um, do you have um could we do it at a time? Uh are you in America, like or are you in Europe or like what time? During... I'm in I'm in Central Time, so I'm in the U.S. Okay. Central Time, okay. Uh, okay, so we'll um, uh, we'll do it pretty. We'll probably be doing it um in the mornings. So because uh, t t David is in um Germany, so we don't want to keep him up too late. Okay, and Brian, no, that's fine. yeah, and Brian, you're in in America too, or? Um, in uh, Europe, so I but I'd be I should be available anyway. Um, should be around to help out if needed. We'll give you some heads up before we start uh, pushing. So, thanks a yeah. lot. We'll work with Alexander and Brian on this then. Okay. Well, uh, that's that's all. Thanks a lot, guys.
here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we will move into the pull requests. Um, I think someone snuck this in of the ones I knew about. If so, would that person like to speak to it? That would be mine, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, this PR pretty much just contributes to the uh, currently ongoing larger endeavor of utilizing LibDMI tests uh, instead of scope logic. So it does this just for the pod eviction admitter tests, uh, pretty small. And it looks like you've got, uh, looks good to me. Anyone I'll, should... I'll review it and hopefully approve. Amazing. Uh, I will just, I'll just see some to it. I think you did. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, this was related to um, what is related to uh, something from the mailing list, which you might want to. I've added there just in case someone's interested in looking at the context. We won't uh, dive into that right now since there's a, a PR that's coming up. Um, but this was about the vert CTL expand command. Um, let's have a quick look at what it looks like. It's quite small. Hmm. Mostly that. Okay. Has anyone jumped onto it? They have not. I suppose Federico is here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, I was just coming back from my PTO, so I, yeah, I, I can have a look. And uh, I think also that we can, but I, I will do it. Uh, I think that we can ping Lee because uh, there is uh, an issue uh, linked here, and uh, it was Lee that opened the original issue. Uh, but uh -huh. I can do it later. After. Oh, yeah, so, uh, video. Yeah, uh, yeah, I will ping you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just stream me. I will take a look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Felix. But I'll just do it now. Oh, I think it's OX. I'm a learning computer. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Um, ah, I think this might be Daniel. Daniel, did you pop this one here? Sorry, I was distracted. Um, yes, actually, that's mine. Um, the progress has a bit stalled on this one. Um, since I think Lee is out, um, and yeah, I would probably, I raised this on the mailing list a couple of days ago, I think. So um, I would be really uh, wanting to push this forward a bit, but I was not too uh, insisting on this one, I would say. Um, in general, I think this should be pretty much done, but yeah, so um, yeah, I, I would appreciate any feedback on this one. Let's, let's put it like that. Fair enough. I, you've, got, um, you've got a bunch of really good things that all kind of 
cover similar areas and they're kind of building off of each other. I kind of get confused which one's which. <clears throat> so this is the one about. Okay, it adds the working group chatter and it adds the working group for the two different builds. Gotcha. Well, um, have, have I reviewed this? Sorry, there's a hold on that PR saying that another one should be reviewed first, uh, number 301. So maybe that's the one we should focus on. Um, so actually, it's like uh, these are based on each other, but I would not say that they... So um, I would need to rebase this one when the, others, when the other gets merged, that's true. Um, but still, these changes can still be looked at um, and whether they make sense or not. So um, if people are pretty, so I'm, I'm just trying to uh, get feedback for a concrete like um, usage of, of these uh, things, um, since we are doing this the first time. Mm. In general, like we were trying thinking that we, we should follow the Kubernetes models when it comes to working groups. Um, but yeah, so I would want to validate whether this is like, are we doing it right or not? That's, that's what I'm asking. But yes, both, uh, PRs, uh, could be, could be looked at more. Let's put it like that. The more eyes and opinions, the better. Especially because it's like community work. And I think like, since you all are part of this community, please feel free to chime in and tell us what is good and what is not that good. And uh, just to build off of that, um, yeah, this is important because it, it affects everyone. Um, uh, whether or not you're in a state now, uh, you, you may end up being pulled into one um, or a sub-project or a working group if, if it's decided that something you want to work on is better served by a working group. Um, and also these are all um, uh, are important for the long-term um, sustainability, I guess, of the community because it's all... Um, the CNCF like to use this term contributor ladder. I, I don't know if it's, it's used outside of the CNCF, um, but basically you can, you have a clearly defined way to become a member of the project and then slowly build a responsibility and, um, and uh, expertise. And so having smaller subsets like the SIGs or a sub project or a working group or a way that people can build expertise in the project without knowing absolutely everything at once. Um, and so this, this uh, affects us now, but it also more importantly affects a lot of people in the future. And so if people can look at these PRs, um, and I will bring up the, um, the thread that Daniel started, I think last week in just a minute, um, it would be, yeah, really helpful for, for everyone. My little stuck box moment. And I think just while we're on that, I'll just jump straight ahead to the mailing list, which I think is this one. Yes, this is the uh, thread they started, and he lists, he, Daniel, lists um, these. And I think there's a third one as well, no? Yes, uh, 306. So I'll list it there. Um, yeah, please look at them. Does anyone have any questions about any of that before I move on? The who's, what's, why's. Sorry, are we talking about every one of these now or just the first one? Uh, as a group, uh, 298, 301, and 306. Uh, 
Uh, okay, no. I meant the, the mailing list entries, not the not the PRs. Sorry. Oh right, right. Sorry. Uh, just just with regards to the uh, the three um, PRs, adding um, um, SIGs. I think uh, uh, already have the SIGs, but I think, I think this builds out our, um, our understanding of it and kind of like what people are required to become a SIG chair. Working groups, how someone becomes a SIG lead and sub project, both the description and how someone um, eight starts a sub sub project, becomes a sub project lead or chair i forget which one um and uh yeah and and what what they mean so um and alongside that there's also specifically the s390x and um sub projects um but yeah all all three of those prs touch on all of that basically how we define this what they are and what it means If there are no questions, I will move on to the next mailing list thread. This is bringing further attention to a bug. Uh, oh, okay. Aurel's already jumped onto this one, in which case, thank you, Aurel. Uh, this was an FYI um, uh, from Brian. Brian, do you want to quickly uh, talk to this since you're here? Yeah, this is just around a kind of a, a workaround that we had. When we initially moved our CI from Docker to Podman, um, we basically set this setting to permissive, which would allow the usage of, of short name container images. Um, but we're basically just cleaning that up now. And you may see if you're still using some short image names that some of your scripts and stuff may fail in CI with the following error. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it, just cleaning up an old workaround that we had um, to try and clean things up a bit. If it breaks, that might be why. Yeah. I think this one is from Felix, who's also here. Did you want to give a quick 10-second uh, summary of what you got here? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm, I'm looking into improving code quality and... Uh, Word CTL and I, I listed some of the major pain points I found uh, so far when looking at the code base. And I just wanted to know if there's anything else people uh, care about or they don't like about Word CTL. So, if there's anything, please let me know. If there's any uh, questions or comments now, you're welcome to chime in while I move to the next point. So I, I feel like um, a bunch of people missed this because of the um, subject of it. And um, apparently some messages from the CNCF have been bouncing for whatever reason, uh, or the Linux Foundation rather. Um, so uh, if you attended Qubit Summit, you will have received an email entitled, uh, thank you for attending Qubit Summit 2024. It was sent on Wednesday, July 10th or 11th, depending on your time zone. Uh, in it is a link to the survey for Qubit Summit. Um, if you haven't and you're unaware of this, Please find that in, wherever it's gone um, in your inbox and uh, click on the survey. It's really short. It's like six questions. It's, um, it's really useful feedback for us planning this next year, especially since um, uh, it is well, one of the questions is about the viability of doing Qubit Summit as an in-person event next year. 
Um, so if that is of any interest to you, even if it's not, if you attended, just fill it in, please. Uh, really helpful. Thank you. Three bugs. I believe this one has been known from at least Lubo. Um, it's come from a Slack discussion that you're a part of. Is Lubo here? He is here. Um, Lubo, did you want to quickly speak to this? Yeah, so I think we uh, kind of um, not interpreting the option really well, or uh, we can do better uh, a little bit here. I think the, the issue describes it pretty well. Now we just we need to decide if we, if we want to implement it or not. Is there anyone that I can potentially assign to this? Uh, uh, so maybe maybe Vladik. Okay. Mini cube. Uh, okay, so what happened? You deployed the Kubernetes cluster on a local machine with Mini cube using Docker, set up two nodes with a CNI flannel. It's a 1.30 Kubernetes cluster. Deployed the VM instance at migration. And it failed. Is this likely an issue with trying to do this through Minikube or should it work with Minikube? I believe since we are referring to Minikube on the Qubit start page, it should work with Minikube. But I'm completely out of ideas what this is about, to be honest. Uh, I don't know if it's helpful, but I tried using Minikube with a two node cluster once on S390X. And what I observed was that the second node didn't deploy a word handler, so it failed to start up. I don't know why that is, but quite possibly because while it is containerized, it's still the same VM or physical machine it's running on. And it might be that there can't be two Libvirt instances on the same OS or so. I don't know if there's a limitation as that. Oh, that's interesting. Um, is it on here? Uh, no. You can assign me. I can have a look later. Maybe next week. Okay. Thank you, Luba. And this is about making it all work with Mac. Let's go back into code name Jammy. Okay. 
Um, Mac ARM architecture computer seems to have an issue with, uh, what do you say? Mac. So it failed. Is this expected to work on a Mac? I do remember um, there was an issue that was well, a PR that was raised after the KubeCon Contrib Fest, which was about adding uh, an additional tool, which I think specifically requires Docker, if anyone remembers this issue, um, uh, to enable someone to deploy Kubevert using one of our quick starts on a Mac. Um, I think it wasn't accepted because it was a requirement to use Docker. Um, do you remember what I'm talking about? Um, or well, similarly, know if uh, this is expected to work on Mac or if we have known issues running. This is not expected to work on Mac. It's not expected. Okay. In which case, uh, we should probably put a note somewhere. I don't look through these guys, I couldn't see anything. Um, can I ask someone who is relatively knowledgeable on the subject to uh, write a response of that sort uh, to this? And then I can raise a bug on the user guide so that we can sure. add something to the user guide. Is that you, Libo? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We've got one more thing before we wrap up. We've got a flaky test fix. Hooray! Since you are here, if you'd like to just quickly um, speak to this, what happened and how you fix it and how this might be useful for people. Is curiously uh, writing in chat at the moment on the Minikube subject. John, are you able to? Can you hear me? Are you able to uh, speak to the flaky text test that you fixed? Uh, the flaky one that was only flaky on S390X, but um, yeah. So when I looked into it. My first thought was, okay, there are a bunch of error messages, but looking through it, uh, I found out that they were simply from the previous test where it didn't clean up the device controller instance It started there. Um, so removing them, and I did fix that, uh, I then looked at the code some more and came to the conclusion, at least code-wise, that it should never pass because uh, the devices were added as permanent devices and the code explicitly does not remove them when the, even if they aren't in the permitted host devices list. Um, so 
Then when I looked into it, what I eventually came to the conclusion of, since the device controller runs in its own separate Go routine, and directly after that, we acquire the lock, which is needed to uh, start the devices. What actually happens on the other architectures is it first arrives at the check for the test case, where it tests are the plugins running. And then afterwards, the started device controller acquires the mutex lock and actually starts the devices. So the test only passed because the uh, devices weren't even started yet, not because they have been removed. Um, so what I essentially did after uh, talking with apps, uh, with XPR Bar, I'm, I'm sorry, I, every time I read your name or your handle, I forgot what your actual name is. Um, anyway, after uh, talking, I came to the conclusion that permanent devices should stay. Okay, Lubo, yeah, thank you. Um, that permanent devices should stay, but uh, temporary added devices should not. So I split the test into two parts, one which checks that permanent devices are not removed and one which checks that temporary devices or devices added after the fact are removed. Right stuff. We do love a flaky test fix. Yeah, essentially, since the flaky part where that... the test was failing was actually the intended result. Awesome. That does bring us to the end of everything that we have here in front of us. Um, I'll leave a couple of seconds now in case anyone wants to jump in with a quick uh, question or a comment before we wrap up. Very well. Um, there was one more thing that I wanted to throw in there, which is actually uh, Rel reminded me on the chat. Uh, 1.3 was released. Uh, it happened on the same day that we had our community meeting last week. Uh, it is out. Um, I think there was an email about it. There was a tweet about it. Uh, so hopefully we're all aware that um, Cuba version 1.3 is out and live. Uh, and um, then you can use it. Go for it. I want to thank you all very much uh, for being here and everything that you do here in the community. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day and we will see you again next week. Thanks. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.